Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Happy Wednesday for those that are here live. For those that are here at whatever day you're in, thanks so much for tuning in. Always an honor to have you. If you come in for the first time, thanks for being here. Not to worry. Even if we're in the middle of something, we tend to circle back. So stick with us. We've been talking about the concept of giving as a measure of appreciation, which is really a measure of this trait called hode, which is to acknowledge gratitude. And really what it is, is a way for us to become the best we can be. It's a pathway of our soul. We are building a channel so that our souls can come out. I spent a bunch of my life in the real estate industry. And I used to love going on project sites. I used to love watching people frame buildings. I was involved in one project where we were building a Ritz Carlton, but there were condominiums. And I still love going from section to section to watch how you go from basically nothing to framing and then they fill in the walls. And the... But what always struck me is when they used to put in the, the MEP, the, mechan the, the mechanical, the electrical, the plumbing, and the concept that there's this generator that can provide electricity. There's all these different parts of the building, but you have to put all the, all the piping and all the channels to that each apartment has what they need so that you can have a bathroom and you can have a light switch. What we're doing here is we're trying to build channels to enable us to take the generator called our soul and bring it out into our eyes, into our mouth, into our hands, into our thoughts. That's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do. We're, we're in the real estate business. We're in the luxury condominium business. It just happens to be that the greatest thing you can, the greatest asset you can invest in is in yourself. Gratitude, acknowledgement, it's a system that you build of channels that allow you to tap into your soul and bring it out into your thoughts. And it's for yourself. And where we were holding yesterday was in this world of many times or sometimes when you do something, you don't get what you expect in return. And so we come at it positively. We come at it with a sense of, okay, I'm going to do it. And it feels great. And for those of you who have done this, and if you have it, you have to. If you haven't at least made one phone call to somebody who took care of you, helped you, saw something in you, was good to you in life, you're missing out on a joy that you'll never really touch in any other area. There is no food. There's no experience. There's no vacation. There's nothing really that could compare in its way. It's unique in the feeling that you have when you say something to light somebody else's life up. And many times there are people that do this all the time and no one really says thank you. There's a lot of teachers out there who believe in kids. And as those kids grow up, they don't really appreciate it. I one time was speaking to a rabbi of mine. I'll never forget this. When I got married, I asked my rabbi who raised me if he would get an honor at, under my chuppah. And we were talking and I said, Rabbi, listen, I, you know, you pick whatever you want. And he was very touched. He said something so interesting to me. This is, a, I mean, this rabbi raised me. He raised me. I was friends with his kids. He, he helped me write my bar mitzvah speech. He encouraged me. I mean, I was a kid in his shul. Every time he saw me, he had something nice to say. And when you're a little kid and you have a, also supposed to the rabbi I grew up with was like very regal. You know, he looked like a rabbi. You know, there are people that just like look like rabbis. Their beard is like perfect. They wear 
everything they just you know they they sit they dress they speak they're articulate they have like a certain look you know what i'm talking about there's like a certain look there are a lot of different rabbis but there's like a type of rabbi look like their hat he was a great orator he was the command in the room i was a little kid i remember like the rabbi's house and he was so nice to me. He was always so encouraging. So I'm sitting in his office later on in my life as I, you know, grew up. So Rabbi, pick anything you want. And he said he wanted to do this thing. He, he understood I was in a yeshiva. I should give the head of the yeshiva something. So on the way out, he says, you know, child, I want to thank you. I said, how come? He says, you know, a lot of kids grew up in the shul. And we work hard on them. We, we want to encourage them. We want to grow them. And then they like grow up and they go to this yeshiva, they go to this thing and they hear this guy and they, whatever. And when they get to the place of getting married, later on and from growing up, they, they honor, they thank the people that are the closest to them in proximity. So the, the speech they heard 10 minutes ago, right? The rabbi that they just walked into a, a half a year ago. And sometimes you, you forget the ones that help raise you. And I think to myself, that happens all the time. There are tons of people out there that were part of our lives that we just forgot. It's not that we did it on purpose, just that life is too busy. So if you haven't yet, you have to. And when you do, when you reach out to them, you're going to feel amazing. But there are people in your life you're going to reach out to and try to help that are not going to respond in kind. And it's going to feel bad. You're going to be like, I'm, uh, and you're not going to get what you expect in return. Now, what you would typically do from there is lower. We would feel disempowered we would feel more negative towards that person. You come out positively. You don't get, even if they're thankful, even if they're appreciative, but you don't expect, you're not getting what you expected. It can lead to us feeling more, more distant from them or more, dis, more discouraged from this type of, this type of life of being a positive force. And so that that moment that you can actually, that we can actually elevate to something much bigger. You see, there's two levels to this, which is really one, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Maybe we'll just do it today and we'll close it. I just want to make sure we hit it. There's two levels of expressing gratitude. There's two levels of doing nice for others. It's not even gratitude only. It could just be doing good for someone else. There's the expression and the act of kindness that goes answered, which is awesome. Great. I love you. I love you. We both win. Right? Here it is. Oh, my gosh. We win. Here, honey, I bought you this. Mom, thank you so much. Win-win. Then there's the next level. And the next level is, I give to you with nothing that I expect in return. I'm giving to you something, a piece of me, words, actions, vulnerability, exposure. And I'm not giving it to you so that you can give it to me in return. It's, that's what I want to do. That's what I should do. That's my mission in this world. My mission in this world is to bring light. My mission in this world is to lighten up the lives of those around me. I so badly want you to feel a certain way. If I get it in return, 
Amazing. But if I don't, I'm okay. In fact, I didn't even expect it. Now I want to explain to you this stuff is super hard. It sounds simple. It's super hard. Remember one time I was speaking for an organization. I'll never forget this. And I was working on a project, a real estate project in Baltimore. Now this organization was further south on the, on the East Coast. It was like in the Carolinas, that area. So I called up the organization and I said, I'm in, I'm, I'm in, I'm in Maryland on business. I didn't realize it. I'm coming to you to speak for you for free. Do you mind just switching my ticket? And they gave me a dance, forget about it. No, it's so expensive to switch a ticket. I said, yeah, but I'm in, I'm there the day before. I'm gonna have to travel back to New York and fly. Well, it's so much money to change a ticket. Okay, I'll never forget. I was in Baltimore that morning, I woke up at four, got on a train to New York, took a train to my home. So I landed in Penn Station, got on an LIR to my home, got in my car, drove to the airport, in New York, flew down to North Carolina or whatever, South Carolina. I remember which one it was. Got from the airport to the, to the to the organization. And I remember walking into the room to speak and there were like, like seven people in the audience. And the person organizing was like, yeah, I, I had a busy week. I'm sorry, I just didn't put the people together. I remember feeling like, what? I'm like, dude, I've been traveling for like 20 hours. <laughs> like I could have gone to Israel and back. And I remember feeling so unappreciated. Not that I, I deserve to be appreciated more. Not that I'm like anyone special, but just the, the schlep, just the work. To not even like work to. And I was so turned off. And I called my rabbi for encouragement. And he said to me that every second that you did what you did isn't for anyone else. It's because that's your mission. It's not if you would have gotten there quicker and they would have, you're looking at the details of it. Every second that you're engaged in the activity that you believe is the right activity is valuable into itself. You didn't go down for them. You didn't go down for to be able to try to, to speak to X amount of people. You didn't go down to someone said, thank you so much. You didn't go down to so what you did was you engaged in an activity because that's your mission. And take pride and take pleasure in what you think you're doing, which, which you think if what you're doing is correct. It doesn't matter if they appreciate it. It doesn't matter if nobody shows up. It doesn't matter if it takes you all day. What matters is that you are moving in a direction that you believe is right. And if you do, then the journey itself is just as valuable as anything you can get from the journey. That was years ago. I'll never forget it. And I told you the story here about the rabbi. Did I tell you that story about the rabbi that I walked into the room and this, the man was, this rabbi is massively popular. And there was like five people listening to him and it didn't matter at all. When we're engaged in behavior that we believe is good, right behavior, it's the behavior that's valuable. It's not the reaction. It's not what we get that's valuable. When you tell somebody something positive about them and they don't respond, it's irrelevant to you. You engaged in behavior that is becoming of somebody who is a soul. You engaged in behavior that is contributing positive divine energy into this world. You've done something that is so valuable that you may never fully appreciate it until 
you're in the, the in the afterlife and you see all the light that you brought into this world. If somebody appreciates it, wonderful. If somebody doesn't, it's just fine because we believe at our core that this is why we're here. This is my job. Mom isn't upset. She's not bent out of shape that the six month old baby that's been crying nonstop doesn't appreciate the fact that she's only slept for two hours. She'd like to sleep more. She'd like him or her to stop crying. But once she brings the bottle up and she starts giving it to the child, she's not like, really? That's all I get? You're just sucking the bottle? You're not even looking up at me? How about a thank you? You know that I've been up for like 12, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning. You know, I haven't showered in two days. Do you realize that? Not to mention that I carried you for nine months and you came out and not nearly killed me and I'm still in pain. You, seriously? Not even like a hello? Because mom doesn't give to a six month old an expectation of return. She does it because she feels that's her job. That's her mission. And here's something crazy. Not only do, this, do parents not even need it or expect it. It's amazing that when you, a parent to a young child is, is a time where they love the kids even more. It's only later in life when there's expectations does the love get complicated. We have to realize that anytime we do something good for somebody else, we're doing more for ourselves than we think. A person whose life is, ba is made on doing for others. Again, you have to do it with, with common sense. You're bigger than anything you can give. Because remember, when you are giving out your light, when you're doing good, you're building a channel that has to get plugged into the nuclear reactor cord, your soul, and you're dragging it out through your eyes and through your mouth and through your hands and through your thoughts. You are going to the generator and you are attaching a wire that brings electricity through your body out to the other person. You are channeling divine energy. And just being the conduit is more valuable for your life than whatever thank you, sure, amazing eyes light up than you can get. The opportunity to light up someone's life is much greater for those that do it than those that get it. And the love that you build for other people only comes when we're willing to do things for others and get nothing in return. As long as we understand that. Because otherwise life gets frustrating. Otherwise you do for others and they don't know how hard it was for you. No one knows how long you slept to get to their wedding or to get to their, God forbid, other things. No one knows how hard it was. Nobody knows how you thought of them to get that present. Nobody understands how hard it was for you to deliver what you delivered because no one's in your head. No one knows how hard it was for you to say what you said. No one knows how, how much you worked on what you worked on because no one's in your life. And so appreciation and acknowledgement and gratitude to others can really be an exercise that has ups and downs. Unless we go at it and start to train ourselves by saying, I'm just doing it. And the doing it is the most valuable thing that I can do. If I get a reaction, gosh, that's gravy, man. I'll take it. I'll cash in. But if I don't, it's okay. Because I'm not doing it for that. I'm given to give. Because I want to be a giver. I want to be the one that lights people up. I want to make sure that my energy gets channeled outward. I don't want to be sitting on a nuclear reactor called my soul and keep it for myself. 
And I know at the end of the day, this world is fair. You don't put things out in the world that's good. It doesn't come back in some way to be helpful. All right, we'll continue. Maybe we'll move on a little bit. I think we'll say. All right, everybody. Thanks for being a part of it. Have an amazing day. I'm looking forward with God's help to seeing you tomorrow.